supporters around Mitt Romney. But the Tea Party leaders here aren't ready to let the Republican establishment forget who rallied in them to sweep all those candidates into office in 2010. That was a Tea Party win that year. And as the convention gets underway right now, is it becoming less about Romney or perhaps not so much about Romney and more about the strength of the next generation GOP leaders we saw on the bench last night? With me now is Jenny Beth Martin, a co-founder of Tea Party Patriots, and Christine O'Donnell, the former Republican Senate candidate from Delaware, who's heading up a festival called appropriately the troublemaker fest thank you very much it's nice to meet you finally I'm, uh, let me uh, let me uh, if these people would quiet down we could have a conversation here uh, let me ask you about the establishment republican but i don't want us to tie you down on this issue of todd aiken and his controversial <laughs> remarks but there seems to be a fight in this party, maybe it's a healthy one, between the establishment, the big shots who always want to win elections at all costs, the money people in some cases, and the grassroots Tea Party people who may not have any money except a vote. Who's the boss? Well, I th oh. Oh, sorry. Well, Christine, okay. first, then the same question. Yeah. Well, I think what we see here happening at the convention is a perfect marriage of both of them. And I think the Romney campaign has done a beautiful job of embracing this Tea Party. Okay, where's Sarah Palin? Well, look at Sarah where's Palin. Michelle Bachman? Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman spoke in 2008. And instead, we have the new generation of constitutional champions that they've passed the baton on to. We have Nikki Haley. We have Scott Walker, we have Marco Rubio, we have Ted Cruz. I mean, they're they're giving these people prime time slots. When you think about in 2008. So Sarah Palin is passe. No, not that at all. It's time for a, a new round of leaders. These are the people who are serving in Have office right now. You become a flack with no, the establishment. You no, sound like such a Romney. What do you want to be, ambassador of the Vatican? No. <laughs> what do you want out of this thing? No, what not is? at all. I genuinely like Mitt okay. Romney. I think he's a good guy. I think he's the right man for the job. And, and what I want to remind people of is in 2008, Nikki Haley was either just running for the state legislature or a state legislature. No, I'm impressed with what she did last night. But I also think there's been shutouts here. Let me ask your thoughts about this, Jenny Beth. You, you're a Southern woman, right? So I say Jenny Beth, both things, yes. right? Okay, I'm serious. So Jenny Beth, what, what happened to Pale? I mean, she was on the ticket just four years ago. A hero to the convention, right? And now gone. Yeah, it's it's what they've done. But the thing is, our people in the Tea Party movement and Tea Party patriots, we don't need any one person. We don't need Sarah. We don't need any person out there to energize us. We're energized well, by where our is own. She? <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask this crowd since it wants to be participating here. <laughs> How would you like to hear? Would you like to see Sarah Palin walk out on that stage tonight? <laughs> What's that about? What's that about? Well, I think they're ready for to pass the baton. Sarah is still speaking. Governor Palin still has a role. Man. You see her on TV all the time. Oh, yeah, I know. She's a fox. She gets paid to do yeah. it. Yeah. She's still out there. She's still championing the right cause, but it's not a single person. And okay. I think it gives the movement okay. greater strength. Uh, Jenny Beth, do you think it would be good if Palin could come out and speak here tonight and tomorrow night? Well, it's not going to happen. So what I okay, think one way go. or the other doesn't matter. Okay. But I, Let I, me I, ask you about Ryan tonight. That's a big story tonight. I think you can all agree on it. Ryan grabbed me when he was first picked. I thought Romney was at his absolute best that day. I thought Ryan was fabulous. He was gung-ho. He was over-the-top exciting. He was young, and he had a true belief in what he was saying. Romney, for that momentary hour or so, seemed to share the true belief. It's like he invaded the soul of Romney. Well, you know that kind of stuff. Anyway. Oh, like I said, so 2000. Uh, and, um, and, and they seem to both be great. They were fabulous together. So how does he make, how does Ryan make Romney as inspiring a leader as Ryan is? I think Romney is. And when you get a glimpse of who Governor Romney truly is, people will get excited about it. We saw Ann Romney last night. And watching that speech from the forum, I think I saw a, a, a marked difference in the energy in that room when she walked out, the, the emotion, the excitement when she was speaking. And as- You know when the excitement ended? When he walked out. No, 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 as a matter of fact. No, listen, let me tell you something. I love that moment. Chris, let me tell you, I love that moment. And if you watch- <laughs> If you watch the replay, he embraced her, kissed her, he said, oh, you were so fabulous. You look at the words, they probably had a great time when they got home. <laughs> I mean, they, they had Aren't such you, uh, love.
Anyway, between each other. It's beautiful. Uh, well, beautiful. Thanks for the portrait you just gave us. Um, uh, I think she's very attractive. I think that he's lucky to have her as a wife. Look at this. A dove. There are these people are all the Ann freaks here. Uh, let me ask you about uh, about the Tea Party in this future. Is the Tea Party going to be someday the dominant force within the Republican Party? I think we're the dominant force right now in the political atmosphere, period. Everyone is talking about our values. 80% of the American people agree with us. It's time to return to a fiscally responsible, constitutionally limited government. They agree with us that we're, we dominate the political spectrum right now. And where we go, the pol politics follow us. She's right. The, the course that the country is headed on right now is mutually assured economic destruction. And common sense Americans, the independent voters, are recognizing that. But how do, you, how, do you have a, how do you avoid a collision between right and left or center right and center left or whatever, left and right, if the Tea Party people say our way or the highway? Because what's happening? Here's what you do: you stick to your principles. We don't endorse people. We don't endorse. If you don't compromise on budget, how do you reduce the size of the budget? Well, here's compromise. That's what's gotten us here, where we are today. How do you reduce it without passing bills and getting them signed by the president? Here's the way to do it: the one cent solution. Cut one penny out of every single dollar the federal government spends this year, next year, and for five years, and we'll be at a balanced budget. One penny. How do you get the Democrats to do that? Well, how do you? What Democrat wouldn't want to do that? It's a common sense solution. But they solution. won't do it. If they will, what do you get? What, do you, where, what is that proposal you make, which sounds reasonable? If it's not going anywhere, how does it reduce the deficit? Well, that's where we come in. We have to make sure we educate the voters so they understand what we stand for and that we have true solutions that aren't radical or draconian that actually will so address the problems the Tea Party Americans point of care view about. Dominates the Congress no. and dominates the White House. You don't get anything done. I don't know that it dominates the Congress. It's a matter of making sure that we convince Americans and Americans are willing to stand up for our values. And, and, and know, what's it going to? I just have to. Find, okay. I just want to know where it goes to because every political party. Abolition said we're going to get rid of slavery. Prohibition, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, let's see, civil rights was to give civil rights. They all have a goal in mind. What I don't understand with the Tea Party is I know your posture. We're against government spending. But what's your actual goal? To reach a passage on the floor of the Congress, signed by the president, we a gradual a, reduction in debt. How do you get that? budget within five years that cuts the overspending. It stops the overspending. Doesn't and Ryan promise it in 20 years? 20, 30 years, and I appreciate the fact that he's put that plan forward. He's put a plan yeah. forward, but 20, 30 okay. years, we can't well, let's count keep talking politicians about, let's that keep, long. Please come back to the show, because I want to talk about how it gets done. There's yes, so much posturing. Like Nancy Pelosi can posture. Are. Everybody right, can posture. Right, everyone can posture. We're worried yeah. about words. Three S's. Strong, solvent, and sovereign, once again. That's what happened under Reagan. Reagan inherited a horrible economy, and he fixed it in, in, in just about two years' time that he was able to campaign with its morning in America again. Obama is hoping Americans don't recognize the fact that government actions do directly have an impact on whether a recession is prolonged or shortened. Right. Barack Obama could have done something, and he chose not to. He chose to make it Well, let me tell you, he tried it this work. way. If you get elected, you'll try it your way. Anyway, thank you, Christine O'Donnell from Delaware, a great state, the first state, and Jenneth Martin from Georgia.